<clears throat> hey there, folks. This is me, Samsara, and I am uh, watching for the second or third time this episode of The Handmaid's Tale. Um, the episode titled Chicago. And so that opens up with June dreaming about Luke. And her being in close proximity to Janine having sex with the oh-so-repulsive Stephen. I don't know. I mean, and all the chatter on the internet about Luke and um, Nick, there seems to be this cadre of people that just really love Luke and really want, um, really want Luke to prevail with June. And I really don't agree, except that they are, you know, they are married. They're still they're married still, but the the character Luke really just kind of pisses me off. He's just kind of of a whiny man to me, and I think people forget that they had the opportunity to leave Gilead earlier, but they didn't. Um, and so that there's part of that's part of the problem, like. Uh, uh, part of why they're there is his inactivity and his lack of ability to just to take firm action. And, um, you know, might be a slight judgment on my part. Um, but, you know, the only action he was able to take was to, like, be unfaithful to his wife and cheat on her with June. So then there's that. Uh, Nick is a mess, of course. Uh, and, um, but I see Nick, like, consistently putting his life on the line for her. Like, he's doing things, he's taking action, or he's not acting with her best interests at heart, which is very different from Luke, very different. I mean, he's always, like, kind of simpering in the background, in my opinion. So, I don't know. I'd be happy to know, you know, when you guys see this video... Uh, what you think and um, you know definitely want to hear your opinions on all of that so I'm looking at a scene where June is washing out her red handmaid's cloak and she's talking to some other member of this resistance group that Stephen is the leader of and uh, the being told about how they trade items for batteries and fuel and supplies that they need And June, being June, wants to go with them and wants to be in the thick of things. Ah, June. June and the PTSD that she's got going on here. But, you know, she wants to take some sort of action. She doesn't want to just sit and be a victim. She wants to do something and she's really all about bringing down Gilead at this point, it really looks like. And so now Steven and Janine are playing games with guns. Ew, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> and they're doing the dysfunctional boyfriend teaching the girlfriend how to shoot the gun thing. Dear, dear, dear. And uh, June has been told that she has to get Steven's permission to go with them on the trading mission that they that they are planning, since he's is uh, Charles in charge of the situation. So Janine is now asking um, to come with them when they go trading, and his first response is, "No, you're new. Stay here." And Janine is saying, "As." Uh, yeah, Janine is saying, you really should let her go because she got, like, you know, all these kids out of Gilead. 
I mean, that, that really is a really deep resume. <laughs> it really qualifies her for a lot of surreptitious activity. So he is agreeing that she can come as long as she listens to him because he's the petty patriarch of the group and he must be obeyed. And um, various forms of servicing must come his way. So now we're in the little aunt's home, or the old age aunt's home, and we see all the aunts hanging out, playing chess. Uh, the music is playing, they're doing crosswords. The sun is streaming in, at, but Aunt Lydia is on the treadmill. She is working out, she is working hard. And she's looking out the window and she's seeing the new young crop of uh, handmaids being brought in. <clears throat> and she's drooling like they're a five course dinner. Because that's where she really wants to be. She really wants to be out there molding and shaping those young handmaids, you know. And so now she's talking to her, like, I, I'm assuming the senior auntie there and um she's ta ta talking about how eager she is to get back to work and she's fully recovered recovered by god's grace and she is ready to get back in the fray breaking the souls of young handmaids and the senior auntie is saying to her you need to rest you're here for rest and um Aunt Lydia is not having it. She's not enjoying this conversation. So, um, it seems that this is like a forced retirement scenario on her. I think that they are trying to respect her long years of service, but uh, she really has been having a hard time keeping these handmaids under control. Um, so, this looks like how you know, how they uh, retire her and save face for her, which is unusual. I would think that that's kind of um, rare that the Gileadian society would even care. But, you know, I guess seniority does have a few perks involved. So she's being told that her her energy, that the, the handmaids are no longer her concern and that her focus should be her rest and that that's what she's there for. And she's being wished Godspeed. But Aunt Lydia's not taking that. Boy, she's really mad. She's back on the treadmill, and she's, you know, like the little engine that could. She's very, 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 very unhappy. I don't know how she can walk and run it on the, run on the treadmill with all those clothes on. I just don't get it. So now we're back in the council chamber, and they're pers uh oh goodness, what's his name now? How am I forgetting his name? Anyway, this other, the other um. Lord, how did I forget his name? So, we can destroy our enemies, and they know. He is asking the council, he whose name I have forgotten, is asking the council for a ceasefire in the war that's going on, the civil war that's going on. He's trying to get the fighting to stop so there could be some resumption of trade. And he's also talking about uh, allowing some aid to come into the area it's a very war-torn area and that that would they can use that as a bargaining chip for uh 
working towards uh, being able to have some resumption of, of business between Gilead and other countries? This proposal is not going over well with the other commanders. And they are pointing out to him, like, basically, why should we follow any of your ideas? Wasn't it your handmaid that ran off with all everybody's children, pretty much everybody probably at that council, their kid was is, is in Canada right now? And he's trying to get them to understand that there are certain economic truths that have to be that have to be taken care of, and um, that they are you know so low on certain vital supplies that being able to uh, have free commerce with other country would be would be to their benefit. Oh, Commander Lawrence, I remember now. Everybody votes against his proposal, including Nick. That, the, the commander's space reminds me so much of like an old, you know, old pictures of Nazis on stage with the two flags, with the with the markings on it and the light streaming in. Oh God. This movie is, excuse me, this show is just so beautifully shot. All the scenes are so amazing. So now Nick and Commander Lawrence are speaking and there's some thought that June might be in Chicago and Nick is talking about how he didn't know about that. And Commander Lawrence says, well, eyes can't see everything, which is interesting because that's what eyes was, the eyes are supposed to do that. So June is out now with Stephen and his lot. Janine is trying to get June to play nice with Stephen and be nice to him. He's warning her that she's being a bit too pushy and that she needs to kind of respect Stephen as the leader. It's pointing out that somebody's dead and identifying that person as one of the night hawks that just kind of comes out and does battle. Stephen is telling uh, June that she'd love Nighthawks, they're just like her. He's trying to approach his work with some stealth, and clearly he's not happy with uh, June's kind of in-your-face attitude <laughs> about being a, a freedom fighter. They are hiding now. And the soldiers are moving through. Stephen and Janine and June are hiding. Trying to be quiet, stay quiet so they're not found out. There's a soldier looking into the area with a flashlight. Seems like they're moving on. 
June is wanting to shoot one of the soldiers. Stephen is disagreeing vehemently, pointing out that if you do that, they'll be swamped by soldiers. If you shoot one, then 20 more will come. June is really insisting that they should have killed one of the soldiers. Stephen is pointing out that, that what would happen to them if a soldier didn't return to the base, and then they would swamp the area and kill everything that could, they could possibly find. June is really having a little bit of a temper tantrum here. Yeah, it's really, it's interesting watching how uh, the trauma of, that uh, June has gone through has really affected her. Um, she um, was really a, a very laid back person. And earlier on, in earlier uh, seasons, we see uh, like her relationship with Luke. She just kind of went along with things. Like, again, you know, knowing that they should have left earlier, but then, uh, n you know, um, hiding, kind of waiting for him to take the lead, which he didn't do. So that means that nobody did anything. Um, and she went from being a person who uh, kind of went with the flow, kind of just kind of did did what was the easiest to do um, to this person who's like now this bitter warrior tired person who she's just done with the whole thing and especially after what happened with her daughter um, in the previous episode where she sees her her beautiful girl and her girl is afraid of her I think that's something that broke even more inside of her and she is just really uh, wanting to bring everything down it, it, as far as Gilead is concerned. She just, you know, and then the, the deaths of her sister handmaids um, has ripped out her soul and guilt about that, sadness about that. And she's just so angry. So now they're going through like a free store and this kind of, I don't know if he's nice or not, but he appears to be a nice young man that's trying to make her acquaintance and she shoes him away. So, you know, not, um, not in a mean way, but she's like, I'm not interested. And um, Janine is like, well, at least you're making friends. But uh, June is not interested in that kind of friendship. June is warning Janine about Stephen and expressing concerns that she's being taken advantage of sexually. And Janine is, of course, pushing back on that and feeling like she knows what she's doing and that he's really nice and that she really likes him. She wants to trade one of their handmaid's cloaks to get this baseball cap for Steven because he really likes baseball. And she tries to trade one cloak and the, the person she was trading with said no. June offers up her cloak. So then there's two cloaks being offered. And the guy says, yes. Janine's very grateful. She says she'll talk to Steven and see if he'll be nicer to her. 
Mm -hmm. You can see some anxiety from June as those cloaks are handed over. I mean, those cloaks have been such a big identifier for who she has been in Gilead. Um, she looked very uncomfortable or, or I don't know, well, the, definitely uncomfortable handing them over. One would think she'd be relieved. So now the commander is talking to Aunt Lydia. She has come to talk to him. It's late. He's the sar sarcastic guy. <laughs> Commander Lawrence is so sarcastic. Like, have you changed your hair? You look different. He invites her to sit. She wants to stand. To what do I owe the pleasure? She says she believes she would be of service to him. Oh, she's telling him that she could put him away for the disappearance of Commander Lawrence, that she has witnesses to his behavior on those on that line, and witnesses to black market activity connected with him, and issues, of course, with Ab Joseph, who is June. Unless you arrange for my immediate reinstatement, it's all going to hit the boards, fella. I'm going to tell everybody about you. And she, he's like, yeah, I hear you. What else you got, he says, in his Commander Lawrence way. He is saying that, um, you know, he can only imagine all the stuff she knows and all the things that she has on other people. And he wants to her to spill the beans to him and collude with him on things that he wants to get to make happen. He wants to be able to use her information to his advantage. He is trying to get a seat back at the, at the table, and information that she has could be helpful to him. He is saying that they can work together to fix the country and make things right again. And asking that they work as a team. She is looking like she'll agree, but she really wants to get her hands on June. So she's saying that if you, I will agree with, uh, with work colluding with you, but you need to hand over up Joseph to me to be dealt with in my fashion, which makes my blood run cold when I even think about that. And he says, I can live with that. So what is up with you, Commander Lawrence? You know, whose side are you on? Do you give a darn about June? When we had that, that episode where the kids were being um, being rescued, it looked like he might be supportive and he might really want to be helping to cure what he did in Gilead um, since he was one of the major constructors of this horrible place. But... Uh, I'm very confused right now as to what's going on with him and why. Um, I don't know. Hopefully more will be revealed there soon because that's he's rubbing me the wrong way right now a lot. So Janine is trying to settle down where she is in Chicago. She's imagining herself having babies with Steven. Oh, Janine, 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 Janine. He is a really bad guy. She's accusing June of being judgmental and harsh. 
and not seeing what's going on, that she's being taken advantage of. And she's saying for sure she totally does. Um, she, she knows what's best for her and she is a grown woman. She definitely is a grown woman. And like she's talking about, well, she's just trying to take care of her and or be there for her. And she says to June, well, maybe you should have thought about that for Alma and Brianna. That was unnecessarily hurtful to say. Uh, so she's like, well, I'm leaving tomorrow. You can do what you want. You can stay here and be of Stephen if you'd like. And she walks away very sad and very hurt. It's challenging, especially for people. So, yeah, yeah, the second episode in a row where June and Janine are, are fighting with each other. And although, you know, a lot of true things are being said, I guess, and latent feelings are coming to the, to the forefront, it's sad to, to see the cohesion between uh, the sisterhood between these two handmaids um, being so fragile right now. June is being driven to move on and to, excuse me, and to bring down Gilead. And Janine just wants some peace. I mean, even if it means she's going to hang around and mate with this abusive guy. Um, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because I, I, I have compassion for the part of us as human beings that just wants all the trauma to stop and just want some peace, even though that might bring a different level of, of uh, trauma into our lives. Because uh, I can't imagine that I've seen no indication that Stephen wants that kind of a relationship. He just wants to have sexual access uh, as part of his power uh, of being the leader of this group. So um, the odds of her having this kind of picket fence fantasy that she's having with Stephen is, is really not possible. Oh, Janine, Janine, Janine. So now... We are in a scene where Nick is meeting with some folks. Who are these folks? That's some Marthas. Talking to handmaids who are part of May Day, it seems like to me. And he's trying, he's asking about June Osborne and the. The Marthas are like later for June Osborne. Everybody that helps her ends up on the wall. He is saying he's sorry about that. He is saying I care about her. He's being told that he's better off without her. And he's not really taking that up. And then the, one of the handmaids tells him that there were two handmaids spotted in Chicago. And he thanks them for that information. So those two handmaids, one of, the, one of whom might most, most probably be June. So she's talking now to the young man who was trying to make her acquaintance and he is giving her directions uh, into the city. Um, at, true to her word, she is packing up packed up and ready to leave this little area. And Janine is coming out to let her know that she will not be accompanying her and that she plans to stay behind. And she's saying goodbye. It's very sad. June says, I had a feeling that you would be staying.
So I guess this is it for saying goodbye. And they're showing appreciation for each other. Rebels are happy to have June, and the folks there are happy to have, are, are lucky to have Janine with them. And June tearfully requests that Janine take care of herself. Aw, that's good that they're parting in a loving way. Janine asks her to wait, and she gives her the hat that she was going to give to Stephen. And she asks to not be forgotten, to which June says, how could I forget you? Yep, yeah, the chick with one eye. How can you forget her? Oh, June calls her beautiful, and Janine calls June beautiful. And it's nice that they're parting company as sisters and not two people who are upset with each other. That part's good. So Janine walks off. She puts the cap on. And she's crying and wiping away her tears. Oh, dear. Aunt Lydia. Like a cowboy. She's putting that, she's putting her coat on. She's got her taser. She's putting a pin on her jacket. She's back. Oh my God. It's totally shot in such a way like in the old westerns with the cowboy getting ready to go out for the 12 o'clock shootout. It's deep. Oh dear, here she is. She's got her own She's got her hands on the on the on the handmaids again. They are sacred vessels. Their char their charge will be hard. Your will will be tested by wicked men. They will try to lead you astray. And when they do, I will be here to listen. Good Lord. Your bond with each other will be strong. From this way forward, none of you will ever walk alone. Wow, that's a powerful, powerful scene. The midwives, the midwives, the handmaids walking around Aunt Lydia in a circle in pairs. And Aunt Lydia feels at rest. She is back in her right livelihood in her mind. She is complete. And now we see this big empty street in the city with June walking right down the center of the street in broad daylight. There's nobody around. What the heck is going on with that? She's walking alone by herself. She's stopping now because she hears something rustling behind her. What could that be? What could that be? She hears something, but she doesn't see anything. She's feeling very nervous about that. She's going to go hide. She's hiding underneath a car. And there's rumbling and rustling. And we're seeing feet. And we look up and there's Janine. Aw. Janine came after her. June is relieved and happy to see her friend. 
She climbs out from under the, the car. And she asks Janine, what are you doing here? And she says, I feel safer when we're together. And handmaids are better when they walk together or walk together in pairs. So off they walk off together. It's a very, very touching scene. Yeah, it's very powerful having that scene right after the scene that uh, with Aunt Lydia, with the new handmaids telling them that as handmaids, they will never walk alone. Um, and that, you know, well, the whole thing about Aunt Lydia keeping them safe from wicked men, I don't know about that. I mean, the whole point of them being handmaids is that they are, are abused repeatedly by wicked men and wicked women and wicked Aunt Lydia. Everybody's pretty darn wicked. But the the energy and the thought that these two, that, you know, the two handmaids all always walk together, always walk in pairs. Um, and then that cutting right to that shot of June walking all alone, that was pretty powerful. And um, there's such a relief. I mean, I felt such a relief seeing that Janine was there and, um, and that they were going to continue their walk together. So, good egg there. Very good. With that previous scene, we also see Nick totally putting himself in danger again because he has rounded up these two Marthas to talk to them, using his power to round them up excuse me, to ask them for information. And that definitely puts him in danger. There are all these people watching and observing him doing that, and anyone could turn him in at any time. So Commander Blaine is now talking to Commander Lawrence, and he is telling Commander Lawrence that he believes that June is in Chicago and that he will back Commander Lawrence on the ceasefire, uh, whatever he needs. And Commander Lawrence is acting very ungrateful about this. He's not really acting like that's a thing. So Nick brings up the, um, the ceasefire right away. And it seems like there's been a shift of power on the council. So they're going to stand down for 24 hours. And yes, clearly they have changed their mind. And then Commander Lawrence is there talking like he has found his feet again. I think whatever information he got from Mount Lydia is being brought to bear on the other commanders. And they're making him coordinate this bombing the the plan is to declare a ceasefire but right before the ceasefire to cut carpet bomb the area that's very gentlemanly um and he's like well we won't have time to get our soldiers out and he's like you better go get them out because this is what we're going to do and he's not being asked he's being told to go move the soldiers out so he you know, for sure something has happened where Commander Blaine doesn't have the power that he did have at the previous meeting. So he's trying to push back and say that he doesn't think that there's enough time. And they say, well, that means you need to get moving and you need to get people moved ASAP. And Commander Lawrence is giving him a look like, well, this is it. this is what it is. And there's something being passed between these two guys that um, is troublesome. So now we have Janine and June walking down the street in Chicago together.
lonely, quiet streets. I guess they are like, they should be like in the center of Chicago. And June's spotty senses are definitely going off. She's wondering where the soldiers are and what's going on. Like there's a checkpoint with no, nobody checking. <laughs> And then they're noticing that there are all this there's all this food left behind. And they're realizing whoever was there must have left in a hurry. They wouldn't have left all that food behind if that wasn't the case. June is um excuse me, um Janine is taking some things and putting it into her backpack. But June is sensing that something really isn't right. Something is really not good. Her spotty senses are really going off. Oh my gosh, now here come planes and explosions. Oh my God. And there are planes overhead and bombs are going off and they are just destroying everything blowing up the buildings blowing up the sidewalks oh my god oh my god oh my god so now we fade to black good night good night <laughs> i've got the hulu that has commercials so irritating is that so I'm sh muting the commercials because I'm just like, whatever. It's bad enough that I have to watch them and I'm not going to deal with them while I'm, I'm doing this chat. So that looked pretty darn scary to me. Um, and it looked like everything around them just blew up. So now this cliffhanger due to commercial has me fretting. <laughs> Um, who, who's affected here, who is, who's still living, who's not living. Oh my God. I'd be so happy when this commercial's over. It's going to take a little bit. So what is going on with Commander Lawrence? I just don't get it. Uh... Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he going to bring actual peace to Gilead? Or is he just going to set himself up as supreme leader? I mean, what do you think? I really want to hear folks' opinion about that. What do you think about that Commander Lawrence guy? Okay, back to the program. And we see... June, who is just, you know, you just can't kill June. She's not killable. She's opening her eyes. She's lying on the ground. It looks like she was kind of blown down and rendered unconscious by the impact of what was going on around her. She's slowly recovering herself. Mm, mm, mm. This is so crazy. And it's totally still affecting me so deeply. I mean, I've seen it before. And it's totally affecting me so crazy deeply. So she slowly gets up. And I don't know if people around her are calling for help. There, there are people nearby calling for help. So she's slowly getting up, the sidewalks all destroyed. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 
And she's like, okay, where's Janine? Where's Janine? What is that on the ground? Is the baseball cap? I didn't see that before. She hears people calling in the distance and then she hears people saying, we're here to help. And she starts to say, help me, but she's saying it in a very whispered tone. She's just had all the air blown out of her, most likely. And now she's calling for Janine. Feeling around and looking for her. Oh my goodness, this song. Oh my goodness, she's walking through the rubble and she can't find Janine anywhere. Everything's all cloudy and dark. Oh my God, oh my God. Janine, Janine, where are you? Everything's on fire, everything's destroyed. And she hears voices of people in the distance and people offering help, but she doesn't see Janine. Somebody seems to be approaching. My goodness, it's Moira. When I first, first saw this, I thought that Janine had like a concussion and was like imagining her there. But now I clearly see that it is Moira. Moira and June staring at each other. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. This show works my nerves. <laughs> this show works my nerves. Oh my goodness. How many days till Wednesday? It's Saturday right now. It's crazy. It's just crazy. And where's Janine? Oh gosh, please, please. Can we not lose another handmaid? Can we just find her and... Can she go to Canada too? Um, oh my goodness. I really, really, I mean, this means if that actually is Moira, because what if it is some kind of a delusion? But if it actually is Moira, that means that June is going to be taken to Canada as a refugee. And um, I really, really, really hope that Janine is also in a place where she can get some freedom as well. If these two women can survive just in... Uh, would all, so many other handmaids have horribly perished. I mean, I'm still trying to get over that episode with the train and those poor handmaids getting shot and then run over. I'm just... Oh my God, that still is right <laughs> on on my shoulders in a deep, deep way. So this was another amazing, amazing episode. Again, as usual, I mean, every single episode this season has just been outstanding uh, in every way, as usual, as I co have come to expect from the show, the acting, cinematography direction um there's so many questions here i'm just on pins and needles trying to you know i wish wednesday would hurry up and get here so we could figure out what the next steps are here um there's a lot hanging in the air what's going on with nick what kind of danger is he in based on this new allegiance that's formed between um the aunt and 
Commander Lawrence. That's a dangerous pairing right there, those two. And then um, what's going to, if June goes back to Canada, what's going to happen with her and Luke? Are they going to really get back together uh, after all that has happened? Um, so much water under the bridge and the little baby and all the stuff that's happened and, and how many murders is June now responsible for? I mean, understandably so, but she is not the same dewy-eyed girl that he cheated on his wife with. <laughs> so there's a lot of questions there. And... Uh, you know, we can go back to what's going on with Mrs. Darn Waterford and her pregnancy. Who the hell is the father? Who is the father of that demon spawn? <laughs> Poor little baby. It's not the baby's fault. So, yeah, I am just exhausted. Um, thank you for watching all that with me, the folks who will eventually watch it. And I'm going to post this in in my YouTube. I feel free to, to like and comment and um, enjoy it. I really am going to check the comments on the Facebook Live in our, uh, our Handmaid's Tale Barrier watch party group. Um... I'm definitely going to look at the comments there. I'm going to look at the comments on the YouTube when it's when it's processed and uploaded. Um, I wish y'all a really good week. I love everybody in the group. Um, uh, my love and, and best wishes to anybody who comes across this video in the future. Um, I can't wait till next Wednesday to see what Chapter 6 has in store for us. Until then... Uh, you know, blessed be.